firstly, thank you everyone for, for joining to the third edition of Spatial Insider webinar series, where we talk about a very wide variety of topics, you know, everything under the sun about the geospatial industry, how businesses use location intelligence, and what can you do uh, as somebody who may be working on similar problems or just maybe curious to learn. So today I'm very excited to be hosting Pradnya. Uh, Pradnya you know, has had a very illustrious career. Uh, she's done a PhD from Georgia Tech. Uh, she led large teams uh, and efforts at very, very large scale back at Google. Relocated back to India some time back and currently leads everything location intelligence, both product and engineering uh, at Swiggy. So uh, please welcome Pradnya. Uh, and Pradnya, very excited to have you here. Thanks, Gaurav. Thanks a lot for inviting me here. Uh, very excited to be here. I have been following your Spatial Insider series for uh, quite a bit, uh, including the Uber talk and stuff like that. Um, so thanks, thanks for inviting me. Yeah, um, and, and we're very excited to have to, to have you. So, uh, Pranya, maybe just to kick things off, uh, you know, I, I I gave a very brief introduction, but yeah, would love to hear from uh, you know in your own words. Maybe tell us a little bit about. Uh, you know, you, what you were doing before Swiggy, uh, and yeah, maybe a, briefly about the role that you uh, play at Swiggy. Obviously, we'll go through some of that in more detail later on. Sure, sounds good. Um, so um, at a high level, I'm a um, hardcore technologist at heart. I've been uh, in the tech industry for more than 15, 16 years now. In terms of industry experience, I've done a PhD before that as well. Um, so, um, uh, after my undergrad, basically, I went to the US, I did my PhD in uh, Georgia Tech in the content distribution networks area. So, I've been in the infrastructure side all throughout since then. Um, now, after my PhD, I joined Google in its early days and I was working on Google's load balancing systems. The Google has, of course, one of the biggest uh, CDNs or content distribution networks. And when I joined, uh, this was early days of Google in 2005. This was even before, say, YouTube was acquired and stuff, right? So we were uh, doing load balancing for a few services at that time. And my first project there was basically redesigning the load balancing system to scale to thousands of services. And um, uh, that's when that's where I got the sort of um, the first huge scale industry experience, right? It was so exciting that, of course, I continued in Google for another um, uh, nine years. Actually, I worked in Google for nine years. Um, so after a couple of years in the US, I moved within Google to the Bangalore office. And I worked in a very interesting uh, AdWords project at that time. It was an early version of what is uh, known as the AdWords Keyword Planner tool. Uh, so basically what we did was we were suggesting um, keywords to advertisers to, uh, to bid on. And before this, it was very manual or guesswork. And what we did was we inverted the search problem. So search Google search is where you are searching for keywords and you get um, uh, uh, pages that match the keyword. What we did was for an AdWords landing page, what are the queries uh, that match this page, right? And then we suggested those to advertisers. The reason I'm going into a lot of detail was it was one of the first few keyword recommendation systems. And I was the first engineer on it, and um, it was a highly business impacting project. We sort of helped Google through the downturn in 2008, 2009 times. And I won the Google Founders Award for that as well, one of the most business impacting as well as uh, technically challenging projects. So um, very, I was very excited to be part of that. Now that was primarily on the tech side. And after that, I saw the uh, sort of potential on the business side as well on the product side. And then I moved on to a couple of other projects where I was tech lead again in the CDN space and stuff. And then um, after nine years in Google, I thought I should uh, uh, try the entrepreneurial world. And I jumped into uh, the startup world on the augmented reality technology side. I co-founded a startup. It was quite interesting. Uh, but then business-wise, we were doing OK. So then a couple, uh, about three years ago, we decided to wrap up that company. And then I joined uh, Swiggy. <clears throat> So when I was start, um, starting uh, my conversations with Swiggy, uh, this whole maps domain and the location intelligence space was heating up quite a bit. And for an, um, for a company like Swiggy, which is uh, uh, in the hyperlocal logistics space, 
location intelligence and in general the mapping layer is very core towards end to end uh, product right right from the entire order journey the delivery assignment back end systems this is a very core product and uh, a technically challenging product as well of course we'll go, get into details on that as well right um so sounded very interesting i didn't have a geo uh, background actually at that point um so when i had moved to india i had seen google map maker at close quarters but i had never sort of been in the geo space um and i thought it was very exciting um space to be in and uh, it's been an awesome journey so at swiggy i am vp engineering um and i lead the entire location intelligence charter so i lead the product as well as engineering charter so this basically includes defining the vision for this uh, charter and as uh, as to how this charter can help swiggy in everywhere right whether it is on the experiences side consumer delivery partners or whether it's on the efficiency side growth side throughout the um, company uh, uh, i basically manage the location intelligence charter um including um sort of uh, uh, as an outcome of the vision is what's the strategy and then how are we executing prioritizing and the end to end uh, ownership of the location uh, charter here yeah perfect so so clearly you know you would you had a very illustrious career spanning different countries a wide variety of very exciting products a bunch of which clearly uh, you know multiple products each one of us on the call have used Uh, i'm sure in in one way or another uh, so you know we, we'll touch we'll get into more of the location aspects uh, but you know a topic i'm always curious to learn more about is uh, slightly you know maybe personal you know uh, a personal question but uh, what prompted the move back to india i know you know we have folks on the call from a wide variety of places a lot of people from india who considered moving to the us Uh, a lot of people who've come back from the US to Asia or India, but yeah, very curious to just uh, you know just briefly learn about what was the thought process there. Sure. Um, so uh, honestly, the trigger itself was personal, uh, mm -hmm. but then as I started thinking more about um, what would it be like to be in the US and what would it be like to be in India. Uh, so this was around two thousand six, two thousand seven is when I was starting to think about it. and i i realized india is basically uh, getting into this hockey stick uh, side right where the opportunities were endless right meaning india was coming up and of course over the last um, 10 12 years we have seen that grow even more but this was the early signs where we could tell that okay india is going to really take off right in terms of say the startup industry or even big companies the kind of projects you are doing here in fact i think it's one of the best decisions i've ever made in my life uh, oh, wow. because so uh, yeah so because uh, honestly so when we came back right um, that's when this adverts project was starting up like i said and i was the first engineer on it and it was basically almost like a skunk works right like a startup within google google was already getting to be this bigger and bigger company and a skunk works project out of this bangalore office that we were doing the product manager uh, tl was here and uh, the kind of pace that we had um, even within uh, google at that time was just phenomenal right so we could really move fast and then of course the product connect has to be there so in fact we used to do quite a few business trips to the us to sit with the, the say account manager so like uh, i was on the adwords side right so sit with account manager see how they are using the product and so we could move so fast right um, the kind of opportunities it gave uh, even within google were actually uh, really exciting and then looking beyond um, google as well right so that's when um, a lot of this aws gcp and the external uh, side was coming up and uh, that's when sort of the flywheel started kicking in and the entrepreneurial world in india also picked up right so mm -hmm. i've never looked back meaning of course there are tons of opportunities to go back to the us or to anywhere for that matter uh, but i uh, it's been an awesome decision and i i still think there's a lot more opportunities here that we can tap into yeah and uh, my my previous startup before next billion uh, it got acquired by a company in the us and you know i went to the bay area and had sort of very similar feelings that you know what the opportunity in in you know in india or asia in general seemed way more exciting than the us but anyway uh, yeah so agora actually i'll just add one more point here 
Um, this is not to say that we should be sort of um, um, uh, restricted to India, right? Meaning while you yeah. are in India, actually with the world so close now, right? As I still visit the USA, for example, once a year, go to the Bay Area, look at uh, mm. a lot of the interesting things happening there, or even say Southeast Asia, Israel and stuff like mm. that, right? So um, it is still important that you are in touch with what is happening and actually internalize it as well, right? So there are a lot of interesting ideas that can be exchanged and opportunities that can be uh, built upon. Yeah, perfect. Okay. So now maybe jumping on to, you know, one of the personal problems, which I'm sure everyone here on the call has had, uh, depending on the country you are in with your favorite food delivery app is you place an order, but then somehow magically the order gets, you know, the delivery driver calls you saying from a different place, hey, I'm here, but you're like, actually, that's not where I am. Um, so I would love, and I'm sure a lot of people in the audience would love to learn more about this problem. Uh, and I'm sure you have personally faced this too, Pradnya. Uh, but yeah, curious to learn more about, uh, you know, why why service delivery problem for, you know, company like Swiggy or any other real-time delivery type companies? Why is this such a, such a hard problem? Why is it such an interesting problem? Uh, so yeah, just would love to sort of start there uh, and, and get your sure. thoughts. Sure, sounds good. Um, so let's uh, talk about delivery in general across the world, and then I'll talk about the India-specific problems, right? Mm -hmm. So if you look at delivery uh, as compared to, say, a ride-hailing company or as compared to, say, a package delivery company, right? The time scales and uh, are actually the biggest challenge that a food delivery company has, right? Meaning, if you look at it from a customer's point of view, right? If I'm sitting here waiting for a, a package delivery uh, to come in, it's the, the um, granularity or the time scale is probably a few days, right? Or maybe next day or so, right? Whereas if you look at, say, um, uh, uh, well, actually ride hailing, you do want it uh, as soon as possible as well. Um, but the uh, challenge with the food delivery company is that, uh, first of all, it's real time. You you want it now, right? And as a customer, if I've ordered food, I'm already getting hungry or get, almost getting there or already hungry, right? And as a, um, a hungry customer who's waiting for a delivery or a food delivery to come in, um, your uh, every minute that gets added to the uh, wait time is basically your anxiety level and your irritation level gets higher and higher, right? So that's the biggest reason that um, from a customer or consumer experience point of view, it is very important for us to ensure that we are doing uh, deliveries on time um, without uh, sort of irritating the customer. Right? So um, um, at a high level, that's the biggest challenge for any food delivery company. Now, if you look at India uh, in particular, um, the address uh, accuracy or the type of ad addresses that you see in India are very unstructured, right? Meaning if you compare to say Singapore or uh, US, Europe or something, the addresses are much more structured. The uh, navigability to the addresses is much more uh, deterministic uh, in some sense. Uh, whereas India is very varied, the uh, structure of the addresses is missing or very uh, mixed, right? Even say structure uh, in the northern part of India versus southern part of India or types of colonies, uh, types of societies, all of that is just a huge mixed bag, right? So there, um, getting the right address text as well as the right address slat long and then matching the two is a big challenge that we have um, um, in general, right? Uh, and there are various ways that we solve it, uh, and we can come to that. But these are the two biggest challenges that we have, uh, at least since we. So, so Pratnya, so I, and actually before, before I add in, so for everyone in the audience, uh, please, uh, if you have any questions or comments, please keep adding them on chat uh, and, and Q&A. Uh, we'll be taking questions as we go along, so no need to wait till the end. Uh, so yeah, so please do feel free to sort of uh, message uh, or just add your thoughts there. Okay, so so coming back to Pradnya, what you were just saying. Uh, so you know you talked about addresses and, and you briefly touched upon this name, you know, package delivery and it's a real time delivery. But could you sort of share why you know this problem is maybe different or more challenging than say 
Amazon or Flipkart, right? Like I'm sure they have similar challenges dealing with unstructured addresses. They talk about it quite a bit uh, on their sort of tech blogs. So curious to know, you know, what's the nature of this problem? And, you know, for let's say people in the audience who may be, you know, working on this problem statement, what are some additional things to keep in mind or, or why is this different? Okay, so actually I'll compare it to um, a ride hailing company. Uh, there's one key difference that actually I missed out when I uh, talked about um, uh, earlier, right? Mm -hmm. um, so if you look at ride hailing company, when you book a ride, it's coming to say your entry gate or if it's in a society, it's downstairs, right? Mm -hmm. Whereas what food delivery companies need to do is we need to uh, deliver to the doorstep. And this is what we refer to um, as the last, last mile. So actually in the uh, delivery space, right? Typically the first mile is where you are, uh, the driver goes to the restaurant and picks up the food or grocery store or whatever it is, right? And then the last mile is from the restaurant or the uh, merchant to the, um, to the uh, customer. Now this last, last mile, which is the actual uh, doorstep delivery, is what makes um, it challenging for the uh, food delivery as compared to the ride hailing, right? And there actually, um, basically, for example, ride hailing companies can get away with say pickup points or drop off points and stuff like that, right? Whereas we need to be able to navigate till the doorstep and that's where some of the uh, challenges and in fact, some of our internal investments are as well. Okay. Uh, and. Uh... So, so, you know, obviously this seems like a pretty challenging and very, you know, interesting problem. And, you know, given the scale, which I think I you know, would be, this was the title of our uh, webinar as well, 9,049, you know, peak orders per minute. So obviously this is happening at quite, a, you know, quite scale. Also different parts of India, I'm sure has very sort of different nature of problems. Uh, so maybe, you know, could you share how is it that, uh, you know, you guys keep a track of this. How do you maybe measure different aspects of this problem? Uh, as a product person, I'm always curious to learn, you know, how, how do you take such a sort of vague and fuzzy problem and put it down into metrics and then track, hey, you know, how, how did a particular thing improve or how do you identify what areas to work on? Sure. Um, so um, I'll answer it from the addresses perspective as well as from the entire mapping space perspective, right? Meaning actually, if you look at, a single orders journey uh, throughout the Swiggy app, right? So what happens when uh, the Swiggy app is opened up, right? You basically get a listing of restaurants, right? That are close by to you. Now, um, the first thing that Maps comes in is, okay, given the location of the customer, what is the delivery address that you are looking at, right? So that's where the, that's the first step to, for us to figure out. If we go wrong over there, then um, it leads to a lot of customer heartburn later on, right? Because I'm sitting here at home and suddenly my order has gone to the office, right? That is an absolute no-no. It's a huge pit and that's something that we track quite closely, right? Because from a customer experience point of view, this is a terrible uh, um, experience, right? Mm -hmm. Now, um, Assuming that we've got the um, address correctly, um, the next thing to know is, okay, what are the restaurants to be shown? Of course, there's some uh, personalization and all those things that happen, but what's the initial set of restaurants that are around you, right? This is a classic maps problem uh, mm -hmm. where given your location, what are say the restaurants within a five kilometer radius, 10 kilometer, whatever the radius might be, right? The thing to note is that the scale is huge here, right? Because there might be 100, 200, whatever number of restaurants around you, 500,000. And um, the idea here is that we need to get these distances in a split second, right? Because mm -hmm. um, that's the, your sort of initial set out of which you're filtering and stuff like that. Now, one order is fine, but if you are doing 9,000 orders uh, a minute, the scale suddenly shoots up, right? One thing to notice about the food delivery as opposed to actually you were um, asking about Amazon and stuff, right? Food delivery typically happens in three sort of peak time slots during the day, right? Bre breakfast, lunch, dinner. So even if we have a certain number of orders per day, they are not um, sort of equally distributed, right? The peaks come up at the breakfast, lunch, dinner, or New Year's Eve, for example, the dinner, just those three hours were just super crazy, right? That's where this 9049 number comes from. So doing these calculations at that scale in the quick time scales that we want is the one of the biggest tech challenges that we 
have in Sigi, right? Now you have the restaurant listing, the um, uh, customer selects the order, uh, selects uh, whatever uh, they want to order and they place the order, okay? Actually, even before placing, we, uh, we do some pricing calculation based on distance and stuff, but that is for a single pair, right? Now that the customer has placed the order, then the, all the backend systems kick in, right? Where we need to now know who is the delivery person that is going to sort of fulfill this order, right? Of course, it goes to the restaurant and stuff. Now, this is where the next tech challenge comes in. Ki given this restaurant and given this order, what are the um, set of de uh, delivery partners that are around this restaurant to whom we can potentially assign this order, right? Note here that these delivery partners are on the move, right? They are not st static. They might be fulfilling some order. They might be getting, um, uh, uh, they might be busy right now, but they'll be free in some time, right? So that is where the next challenge comes in, where how do we get, first of all, the set of delivery partners that are around this restaurant while they are on the move? And then given that set, what is the right um, sort of delivery partner to assign this to, right? So there's the whole assignment system that comes in. Once, once the assignment happens, delivery person uh, picks up the order, what is the um, uh, sort of, um, uh, how, how can we help the delivery person fulfill this order, right? Can we navigate them properly to the restaurant? Can they find the restaurants, right? So in a place like India or even some of the Southeast Asia countries, right? Sometimes finding that tiny restaurant, the board might also not be there. It's, it is uh, it is quite challenging, right? Mm -hmm. um, so then finding the restaurant. Now, once they pick up the order, how do they uh, get to the customer side as well, right? So navigating them over there. Of course, sometimes uh, they use standard mapping providers and stuff like that. We also use standard ma mapping providers. Um, but then uh, how do you navigate them to the doorstep? That's the sort of last piece that I was talking about, right? Can they get that ad accurate address and can they get there correctly, right? What do we do if that address was inaccurate for whatever reason, right? Customer might have onboarded a wrong address. So then there are some challenges that come in there. So I can get into the solution, but. Basically, yep. if you see the entire order journey, we are sort of touching uh, almost every part, right? And each part, there can be a lot of things that can go wrong at that scale, right? Even a tiny percentage that goes wrong basically means that we still have um, quite a few angry and hungry customers that are uh, waiting for their food. Yeah, I remember this from back from my previous jobs. Like I read some statistic by Accenture which said, uh, they did a survey of a bunch of companies and they identified that greater than 60% of customer feedback had a geospatial component or another. Another one was, you know, customers when they're interacting with like a food delivery or a ride hailing or, or you know, similar application, uh, mm -hmm. 55 or 50 plus percent or almost 50% of interactions, uh, you know, with the application again had some location component or another. So, right. so maybe I'm a good segue to, you know, taking the first couple of questions. So let's Actually, take the first one. Gaurav, sorry, can I just, sorry, interrupt you? Um, so I know you asked me about metrics, right? Let me just, uh, I realized I didn't give you a concrete answer on this. So the biggest ones, like I said, actually, I alluded to you, but uh, just to mm -hmm. clarify, right? Cancellations for us is a huge pit. We track mm -hmm. that extremely closely, right? Because, um, any cancellation that happens because say um, uh, we were not able to give the uh, accurate address or the delivery partner went to the wrong location or so is a huge no-no for us. So we track that very closely. The other uh, metric we track very closely is how many times the delivery partner calls the customer, right? Meaning as a customer, I myself get very annoyed. I'm in a meeting and someone calls me that, okay, your food is here. I don't want to answer that call, right? Um, so that is another metric that we uh, track and we know that there's, uh, we are doing a lot of things to improve on that, but we know we have miles to go there uh, in mm -hmm. terms of what we call as silent deliveries, right? My, the moment I get a Swiggy call, I'll be like, oh, my metric just went bad, right? Because I got a Swiggy de uh, delivery partner calling me right now. <laughs> so, yeah, makes sense. Yeah, I, I, I can completely relate. Um, so, so yeah, maybe, the, and this is a good segue, right? To, to taking one of the first questions this is from Ashu Raheja. Uh, so, you know, let me sort of elaborate a little bit on the question, right? So, which is obviously you mentioned, Pradhyay, it's a very multi-dimensional problem, touching sort of customer experience at at a very almost throughout the entire journey, affecting obviously a bunch of very key metrics. 
So, you know, what maps are you using on the back end to power all of these different problem statements? Is it just one single, I don't know, Google Maps? Is it a combination of different sources? So just help us understand a little bit about what does sort of the ecosystem internally look like in whatever detail you can share. Um, so we do use um, we do use uh, Google Maps. Um, we use a bunch of actually mapping providers because, uh, like I said, right, India is quite vast and varied. We are in 500 plus cities. So what works for say a tier one city might not necessarily necessarily work for a tier two, tier three city, right? So we understand that various mapping providers have uh, different sort of data quality or API quality, uh, actually data quality in uh, different regions. So we do um, uh, sort of, ex in fact, we always keep experimenting with uh, new mapping providers just to see whether we can do better on some of these metrics by incorporating um, data or APIs from others, right? Um, so yeah, so at, at a high level, actually, there's no uh, meaning. Of course, Google Maps is uh, what everyone trusts, but uh, there are other providers that are also uh, doing well, especially in India, and we are looking at that. We do also do some of this internally, and uh, we can get into that more as well, uh, because we do realize that our uh, needs and our the way Swiggy deliveries need to be done seamlessly, we have some certain um, sort of customized or special requirements, which um, mm -hmm. standard mapping providers don't necessarily give. And which is actually one of the biggest reasons that we did set up this internal team within Swiggy that is completely focused on location intelligence and how do we build the right data for a seamless delivery experience for Swiggy. Yeah, and this, this was my experience. This has been, you know, obviously based on my personal experience back in Grab, but also, uh, you know, a bunch of our customers, pretty much everyone seems to have a mishmash of a little bit of, you know, vendor X, a little bit of vendor Y, a bunch of internal solutions, some data being bought from somebody else, some data being created in-house. And it's like sort of like this package of uh, a bunch of different things. So maybe let's take another question, which is, uh, this is from Alpesh. So I guess this goes back to, uh, you know, what Pradna, you briefly alluded to, which is when the you know app opens, how do you decide the selection of restaurants? The question is from user point of view, how Swiggy decides the radius of the user and display the restaurants according to his or her location? Right. Um, so this is something uh, that we call a serviceability and actually our uh, tech uh, blog has a great article about how we do this. Um, so, uh, the idea is that we want to enable uh, customers to be served from as many restaurants as possible, right? So, although we do have certain distances or we start with certain distances, we tune them up and down actually based on, say, how the pressure on the system is also, right? See, this is not a purely tech-only system, right? There is the sort of counterpart operational challenges on the ground, right? We could say that we want to serve all of, say, uh, Bangalore, right? So you could open up the entire city, but then if there are limited delivery partners that are available to fulfill these orders, we can't really open you up completely, right? Then we might um, uh, sort of cut down the radius, right? So some of this dynamicity comes uh, based on how of uh, how the supply of the delivery partner side is also, right? So Swiggy is what is known as a three-way marketplace, right? So the restaurant uh, capacity, the delivery uh, uh, partner capacity, and then, then the, there's the customer mm -hmm. um, demand on the other side. Makes sense. Okay, okay. cool. So, so maybe- Actually, the... Gaurav, I'll quickly answer that OpenStreetMap question. So we, yes, yeah, we, do, uh, we do use uh, OpenStreetMap as well, uh, quite a bit. Um, Mm, we do have uh, challenges, meaning OpenStreetMap, of course, is crowdsourced and um, quite um, uh, well regarded. At the same time, there are challenges, right? Meaning the data quality cannot be uniform all throughout. And then we basically then evaluate and decide where can we use OpenStreetMap versus not and stuff like that. Um, we contribute back to it as well, right? Perfect. Yeah, and, and we're, we are big believers in, in OSM as well. Uh, pretty much have been working on that for a number of years. So yeah, I think 
you need to sort of find your way to to understand hey it, it works for this use case maybe it does not work that well for that use case and how do you sort of improve it how do you sort of you know do your part in in improving the the open street map ecosystem okay so so maybe moving on slightly um, so uh, so maybe taking a different angle now which is so i, I know swiggy now does you know not just food delivery but you know bunch of other things as well uh, groceries and sort of you know other things so you know would love to understand if if and what kind of differences might exist with let's say and i know these days there are like companies doing early morning deliveries like they say hey you know before 7 am something will you know you order the previous night and before 7 am it will arrive at your doorstep you know that versus say say grocery deliveries so so curious to sort of get your take on what are the you know some unique challenges with that that are very specific to one of those use cases mm -hmm. sure um so groceries actually there are two or three different flavors right like you said so there could be scheduled del deliveries where the um uh, the interesting or the upside is that you can plan your uh, delivery partner assignment accordingly right because you know this uh, delivery is coming up so then you can uh, the uh, assignment efficiency or optimization can be much uh, uh, done much better right um in terms of uh, uh, quick commerce right so everyone is going towards this uh, i want my groceries now right so you want it within say 15 minutes so then how do we sort of assign your order or actually even um accept your order at the nearest sort of um uh, uh pod or uh, basically the grocery store that we can map mm -hmm. you to right uh, so that is one of the things that we uh, always look at that we shouldn't assign you to something that's far off right because then we can't meet that uh, 15 minute uh, or 30 minute uh, guarantee right um so that that's on the quick commerce side on the morning delivery side right that's actually a very interesting problem because uh, that is one time slot where you cannot call the customer right meaning customer is sleeping you don't want to uh, wake them up but if the there is some challenge with the address how do you handle it and that is where actually a lot of the challenges come in because um, meaning then either cancellation happens or then you wait until uh, say post 7 or whenever when you can actually call the customer so it is actually quite challenging and we are still working on uh, ways to solve it and that is where a lot of this address accuracy thing comes up and i'll actually related uh, there's a question on why is address um, if you are collecting the pin drop uh, location of users why is location accuracy still an issue right um so i'll elaborate a bit on how we actually take these addresses so we take the address that long from the map as well as the address text right now what happens is sometimes by mistake right um the customer might move the map and they don't realize that they moved the map and um used a different pin location as compared to what they intended right and this could be a mistake we do um sort of try and react to some of these um meaning maybe not in the first couple of uh, first few deliveries but after a few deliveries we know that okay this is the delivery location is actually this xyz lat long and not the first abc lat long so we do um, correct these uh, locations in the backend uh, by using um, some clustering algorithms and stuff like that but it is still a challenge and um, uh, it's actually one of the biggest challenges right how do you ensure that the location and the text are mapping um, correctly yeah and one of our actually team members uh, was just on this point that you just made uh, she was telling us like one of the reasons she really wanted to attend this is she has experienced this personally where when she just moved into a new house uh, the first couple of times you know the delivery was happening at some other block or some let's sort of other apartment but then from the third time everything was working very smoothly so yeah i guess this is this is the part about uh, you know utilizing repeat data and you know uh, from customers yeah. and seeing what you can do to to make things work better right. the next 
right but at the same time i am not happy that the first two deliveries didn't go well right so then the question next question is so take care three deliveries onwards maybe will be fine but how do you solve it for the first two right how do you improve your address uh, addition in the first place right and this i am talking now right now from the consumer's point of view right but yes. a big part here is how does the driver um, use the location and the maps as well right there's actually this very interesting anecdote that i should share where i was talking to um, someone in the ops team recently mm-hmm. where the driver is slightly uh, older they haven't really used the map um, interface as much so but they wanted to do uh, swiggy deliveries right so what they actually did was um, sort of get someone to sit with them on the scooter and navigate for them on the map while they are doing the deliveries right meaning then i'm like okay how do we handle this kind of a driver experience yeah. right if they are not comfortable yeah, with the map in the first of what we talked about which is you know solving for early morning deliveries where you cannot really um for example call somebody i guess the good thing in, in a way uh, of uh, having a bunch of these different business lines that you need to solve for is obviously improving something for that early morning use case obviously then translates to you know that working well for obviously other customers as well so so i guess there is some of this you know synergy of uh, having a multi use case platform right absolutely yeah okay cool so uh, and other calculations blazingly fast uh, what tech is under the covers i'm going to just broaden this question a little bit uh, which is one of the things i'm i'm always curious to learn more about is scale uh, so I, i read one of the tweets from harsha who said that um uh, 6 years ago uh, you know it, it was a post on they were looking for an ios developer and he said 6 years later we've completed 1 and 1/2 billion deliveries and we're still looking for ios developers uh, but sort of you know leaving the ios bit aside you know, 1.5 deliveries is pretty crazy Uh, and, and you touched upon uh, let's say the new year 9049 per minute etc so you know just tell us a little bit about uh, you know what are some of the challenges that come with uh, you know solving things at such large scale uh, and uh, yeah just you know i know we have a bunch of technical people in the audience so yeah, do share about some interesting problems that come with this and what are some of the things you do yes so first of all let me start with saying that we have a fantastic uh, tech team i think uh, the maps tech team is one of the best uh, in swiggy um so we uh, focus on uh, latency and um, handling high scale queries uh, quite a bit um so a lot of our development is on golang actually um mm-hmm. we do use um, a few of these uh, open source um, uh, projects so we use tile 38 graph hopper and stuff so tile 38 for for example is for uh, doing point in polygon queries where we are say when you're doing address onboarding right we want to know whether you are coming from a specific society then we can customize the address onboarding form accordingly and stuff like that right so we do use that uh we use graph hopper for um say the routing over uh, the open street map data uh, that we have right um so we do use a lot of that we are very big into sort of uh, auto scaling um so we um uh, uh, we are actually uh, primarily on aws and we do use auto scaling systems quite a bit um so as the traffic scales up right um our systems will scale up based on the demand right so for example even when we were planning for new year's eve and stuff like that right um by the way a lot of planning does go into new year's eve because that's the peak day for us and um, we sort of ensured that um all the scales uh, right as a, and it's not just about the app uh, it's also about the delivery partners right so we need to track say delivery partners so we have their ping data coming in so we need so we know the location of the delivery partner the right location when we are doing assignments and stuff like that right so all these systems across the board have to um auto scale to the demands that are coming in and we can't do sort of fixed allocation right then we'll be burning cash through the roof right which we cannot do so that's where a lot of these um, uh, tech uh, sort of uh, systems come in play so and uh, you know you touched briefly upon new years uh, and i know it's sort of like i i know flipkart has you know talks about you know doing everything big billion day backwards 
So it sounds like you know New Year's is, is, is you know one of the big problem statements in Swiggy. So maybe you know share a little bit about uh, you know anything you can about one or some interesting things that you do planning for New Year's Eve. Sure. Um, so typically, the business teams will come up with estimates on how um, how many orders we expect uh, in the day, as well as say during the peak hours, right? Like I said, even if they estimate during the day, it's actually not good enough for us because the peak can suddenly shoot up, right? Um, so we also need estimates on the peaks. We also get estimates on um, the delivery partner uh, hiring that we'll be doing in order to fulfill these uh, orders as well, right? Now, based on these numbers, we work backward and we estimate how many, say, pings per second will we get from the delivery partners, how many, um, so if there are uh, that many orders expected, then how many app open sessions will, will we expect? And hence, how much do, does our point in polygon query capacity need to scale, scale and stuff like that, right? So for each of these systems, we sort of estimate what is the peak that's going to be. We, of course, do a lot of uh, perf test, load testing and stuff that happens whenever we launch systems, of course, but even as part of the NYE planning, right? Um, we sort of ensure that every system is perf tested to the capacity. And in fact, I'm very proud to say that we uh, uh, went through the whole New Year's Eve without, with, with actually awesome. a single pager duty alert, right? Where we missed That's one system awesome. and then within five minutes, the engineering team was um, quick enough to sort of revert and uh, quickly handle that. Um, but otherwise, um, it's uh, it, it is actually nerve wracking also very exciting as well right because the entire company is sitting there yeah, and uh, sort of looking at the charts how many orders are coming in are we fulfilling them because uh, see uh, the, at this scale what happens is even a tiny percentage of orders that get missed right can okay. result in a terrible yeah. customer experience or on the driver side right if there is some issue in the driver app drivers are not getting the orders correctly they are unable to say mark the status then how do you handle it right so there's a lot of these systems that need to work as expected in order to get your food especially during new year's right you are having a new year's party you don't want swiggy to mess up <laughs> your new year's party right um yeah, so a lot of planning goes in um and yeah, very well lovely. handled I think. That's a lot of stress, like ensuring people's New Year's parties, you know, go well as an engineer. Uh, yeah, I'm sure many engineers wouldn't have thought that they would ever be doing something that can make or break somebody's New Year's Eve party. Right. And the interesting thing is that we don't get New Year's, right? Or we get to celebrate <laughs> New Year's with our colleagues, right? So that is also pretty interesting, actually. Cool. Okay. So, yeah, I, we're coming sort of to, towards the end, but let, let's take, I feel quite a few questions, but let's take, you know, some. Uh, okay. So I'm going to take one, this one from Bupendra, right? because this seems like, uh, you know, it, it's always a question on other, everyone's mind, which is, you know, it, machine learning is obviously, you know, very hard topic. Uh, so can you share which places do you use machine learning in, in, in delivery space and, you know, for what problems? Sure. Um... So quite a bit, uh, I'll talk specifically about maps and then um, uh, in general in delivery as well, right? So on the map side, right? Uh, one of the things is that um, we do um, say distance time estimations between two points uh, as well as time estimations at um, say uh, the restaurant, right? Because um, uh, what we call as wait times, meaning delivery partners are, has arrived at the restaurant, but the food is not yet ready. Right. So we have, say, ML models over there, which estimate how much uh, time will a restaurant um, take to prepare a food, prepare the uh, food order. And in fact, we can play around with the assignments accordingly. Right. So we can do uh, the assignment a bit later. So all of this is actually um, completely model driven. Um, in fact, Swiggy has a great data platform team and um, sort of all our models run on um, uh, uh, the DSP also. The, um, uh, uh, um, so uh, this is across all, all of Swiggy, right? Whether it is a search models or assignment models, uh, maps models, all of it. Um, another place we use this quite a lot is, like I said, on the address accuracy, um, where we even say detecting that this address text and location did not match, right? So we run models to figure out whether this is happening and then how can we auto-correct in the backend? 
as well as um, at a later point, uh, how can we do this validation upfront as well, right, in terms of the ML models. The new uh, areas that we are actually uh, exploring, and this come, ties in with the doorstep delivery that I uh, talked about, right, where we want to sort of do the endpoint navigation as well, right, mm -hmm. uh, up to the doorstep. Now, if we want to help the delivery person with uh, what we call as uh, uh, LLM entities, right, where we want to tell them that uh, give give them directions up to the point that, okay, this is the entry gate. This is the correct a commercial entry gate, for example, right? Mm -hmm. um, not all societies will allow yeah, delivery correct. partners to come in through all, society, uh, all gates, right? So we need to identify the commercial entry gate. We do this using uh, models here, right? Or once they get through the entry gate, where should they go park for say tower B, right? So this is the parking spot over here. And then um, you can walk up the stairs, right? So all of these sort of entity detection um, uh, is done using uh, these models as well. Perfect, okay, cool. Uh, and uh, we ran a poll, I guess, uh, a lot of people expressed to the audience that you know people are working on different mapping problems. So, so maybe sort of touching upon that, which is, uh, so, you know, there are obviously a lot of companies, you know, people from different companies here, Pradnya, some small, some large, uh, who are, you know, working on different mapping problems or delivery problems. So if you had to sort of, you know, give advice uh, to companies about, uh, let's say somebody is operating in a real time or instant delivery kind of a space, uh, mm -hmm. what are some areas would you recommend? Uh, maybe share your advice based on, you know, as the business is scaling at what stage, what are some high business impact problems people could focus on how to think of we also you know briefly earlier touched upon you know how things are a mishmash in reality at most big companies of mapping systems so maybe how should companies think about build versus buy but yeah it is generally you know what would be your advice for companies and people starting off investing in maps in their delivery business yeah. Actually, that's a great question, uh, Gaurav, because we also grappled with that quite a bit, right, As, um, in the last two years. And um, the answer does um, vary based on the stage you are, of course. So when you're starting out, right, um, I think there are good uh, mapping providers which you can directly leverage um, rather than uh, sort of trying to do or building this on your own, right? Because um, uh, there is um, the the uh, mapping providers in India have evolved quite a bit, and I think um, it's a, a good enough space that you can directly leverage, especially when you're starting off. See, mapping is not um, an easy problem to deal with, right? Technically, it is very challenging. It is very ops heavy also. It is extremely cross-functional. There's engineering, there's product, mm -hmm. there's uh, data science, there's ops, analytics, meaning there's a lot of functions that are coming in play and you don't want to get go down that uh, path unless you know that you really, really want it, right? So definitely not at the early stage. Um, as you get towards mid stage, right? Um, um, some of your uh, specific challenges will start to emerge and that's when you can start thinking about some of this. But even at that point, you can uh, sort of look at, say, some functions of your own, whereas some functions you can directly leverage, right? So, for example, um, meaning in maps, there's the infra, the high scale infra part of it, there's the storage part of it, there's the APIs that you can use, there's the data part of it. So, you can decide that, okay, for now, I'll just use APIs for this particular subset and uh, some of these. Um, problems which are specific to me. So for example, in our case, right, the LLM is a very specific problem to us. So that mm -hmm. is where we sort of decided to uh, invest um, uh, some more uh, bandwidth. But then from the data perspective, we could tie up with someone or buy some data there, right? It need not be completely either or you can do a sort of a combination um, of the two, right? And then as you get bigger and bigger, right, you realize that your scale is uh, going bigger, your, then you start worrying about at this scale, is this cost justifiable? Exactly. For my use case, is this good enough? And that's when you sort of start to probably do uh, more of these things in house. Um, but there's always a cost benefit analysis, right? Ki, do I need to go down this path, which is so cross-functional, which is a lot of investment. And um, so you need to go uh, down that path because you know that you are creating a business differentiator, right? Yep, exactly. um, and that, 
that is actually the critical part right so actually i didn't talk about some of the solutions and stuff right but we do have quite a few challenges in terms of say fleet detection okay i actually i'll give a couple of anecdotal examples not anecdotal actually we have metrics on it but um, this examples will illustrate why we want to do something internally right now um when we are taking the gps uh, pings from the delivery partners right we know where they are and stuff so that our assignments are correct right now uh, we saw a lot of cases where a delivery partner is assigned uh, an order but they haven't moved for the last say 5 minutes 10 minutes right and then as a customer you are getting anxious ki oh the delivery partner the uh, uh, delivery partner has been assigned but they haven't moved or they have picked up their food from the restaurant but they haven't moved why have they not moved right if you are watching the track screen you are like i want my food and food can get cold all those challenges come in right so we did a simple thing where we basically nudge the driver right ki okay you have been assigned an order can you move and we actually saw that okay just based on the nudge um, the uh, driver started moving right and uh, that's a very uh, simple solve for a very specific problem right now whether a mapping provider is going to be able to provide you uh, a functionality like this is not really clear right some of them might uh, and they are starting to do that but uh, these kind of examples or actually i'll give another actually another interesting example from a consumer perspective right um so there were these cases where uh, say a delivery partner is um, marking an order as delivered right mm -hmm. now if delivery partner says delivered and as a consumer i haven't received my order i'll go through the roof right as in what's happening here why is my order not at my doorstep but marked as delivered in the um, app right so we did a very simple thing where given your customer address right we set up a what is called as virtual geofence around you right where um, only after the uh, delivery partner enters that geofence can they uh, mm -hmm. mark the order as delivered right immediately our customer uh, experience went uh, much better right because now the delivery partner is not 1 km away when they are marking the order as delivered right they are actually within um, a certain radius of you and the more um, confident we are of the accuracy of the address the tighter we make that radius right um so these kind of things uh, these kind of specific uh, solves that we have for our use cases right mm -hmm. um that's when we sort of see the benefit of doing some of these things um, internally right yeah. and uh, and to answer your question right so then depending on how the business is where you are at when you are starting off your i'm pretty sure address accuracy is going to be your biggest challenge right so you'll focus on that you'll use standard mapping providers for that and then as you grow bigger uh, some of these other challenges will come in and you can do other things on your perfect that was fantastic uh, and hopefully a lot of our audience members uh, took a lot out of that i certainly did um, i know we are all actually we are over time but uh, but there are quite a few questions left maybe we'll take one last one uh, so i see this question asked in two three different places uh, in in different variation which is about sort of rider assignment uh, I, I know this is an area pratna you don't you know may not be owning entirely by yourself but given the volume of questions around it would love if you can share so you know what are some of the questions which is you know what are the factors that you know rider assignment is based on obviously apart from distance let's say driver rating driver acceptance time slot this is one of the question another question is do delivery partners work on multi pickup multi drop model or single pick single drop model another question related question is um, how do you decide which delivery partner should you assign to a specific order so there's a bunch of questions around uh, yeah, another is is it auto assigned to, to them or they choose by themselves uh you know is it based on a zone based thing let's say like a to assign people who are familiar with a specific neighborhood quite a few questions but yeah we'll take this as the last one so pratnya whatever you can share about you know some of these aspects of uh, assignment Sure. Uh, so I'll uh, answer at a high level, and then I'll talk about the map-specific things we are doing on the assignment side as well, right? Because uh, that might be more interesting to the audience as well. 
um so assignment um, basically primarily for the first thing always is about um, is with on based on the distance right meaning the delivery partner shouldn't be 20 kilometers away right then it doesn't make sense because then they have to come all the way to the restaurant so first of all it is based on where the restaurant is right meaning the restaurant and the delivery partners around it there is some uh, zone um, uh, uh, coming in and basically typically customers mm -hmm. restaurants are within the same zone but now as we are expanding say uh, the radius in which the uh, customer can order from we could do sort of long distance or across zones as well right so it's uh, the first factor definitely is the distance to the restaurant uh, we do try and um, look at, say, driver familiarity um, uh, in terms of the zone, at least, and whether they are familiar with that area. And it's basically based on how many orders have they done in this area and stuff like that as well, right? Um, it's also about the system efficiency, right? Uh, meaning you don't want to assign, say, a driver um, actually, the destination also matters, right? Because if the destination is far away and they're going, say, away from the area, then uh, they have to come back uh, to this area. So typically, they are sort of assigned to a zone. Um, so all of these factors come in because you don't want all the delivery partners to go to one corner of the city and then the rest of the city is blank, right? So we need to balance that out as well. So various of these factors that come in. Okay, perfect. Okay, cool. Uh, we are out of time, everyone. Uh, I know we could not go through all the questions. Uh, there are quite a few more questions on pings, but I know you've touched quite a bit upon that. But yeah, we'll call it a day here. Uh, so thank you so much, Pratnya, for you know patiently answering my questions and going through all these audience questions. And thank you so much, everyone in the audience, for attending. Uh, do share uh, you know uh, your thoughts on how you like them. And feel free to reach out to us if you think we shameless plug next billion, if you think next billion can help with your mapping problems in any way. So thank you so much, everyone. Uh, and yeah, have a good evening, good night, good afternoon, wherever you might be in the world. So thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Goro. Thanks for inviting me. Excellent questions. Actually, I'm sorry I could not answer uh, <laughs> a few of them, uh, but I hope this was useful. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, bye-bye.